What is going on to all my Euphoria fans out there? Elliot back again, and uh, this is it. This is the finale we've been waiting for. We are breaking down the season two, episode eight, season finale. And I mean, we lost a character, we lost a relationship, we lost a family, and so much more. And I'm so excited to break down this episode with you all here in the spoiler review. But before we dive into it, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you all are new to the channel, we recently crossed 20,000 subscribers, and I love this community so much, and I want you to be a part of it. So make sure you're subscribed and you're hitting that notification bell. And as you can see on the screen now, if you enjoyed this for the review of Euphoria Season 2 Finale, we'll make sure to like this video and also share the video to all the Euphoria fans you know out there that love this show just as much as we do. And more importantly, once you've seen this finale, Go ahead and light up the comments with your pros, your cons, your favorite moment, least favorite moment. Let's talk about the characters. Let's talk about the season. Who is your favorite character, least favorite character, favorite moment of the season? And let's just have that conversation. Which season was better? Season one, season two, and of course, what you hope to see in the future of the show. I'm talking season three, which we'll be releasing in 2049. <laughs> Let's talk about it all in the comments below. So, hey, before we break it all down, I got to take the moment to thank you all. Number one, we had from 7.30 p.m. Central Time all the way to close to 11 p.m. We were live streaming, man. I had such a great time. First off, we had a watch party. So if you want to see my live reaction, watch an episode for the first time, watch that watch party watch my live reaction i'm gonna leave that link in the description below i appreciate every single one of you all for supporting that video for tuning in watching it live or watching the replay it means a lot to me and then we had our live our finale after show with myself and big dog and gabriella such a great conversation such a good time with you all so i want to appreciate every single one of you all watching those live streams supporting those live streams whether it was live on the replay thank you so much but then speaking of thanking you all the last eight weeks have been fantastic i mean literally Literally, look at the picture here. I mean, I went from that haircut to this. The beard is growing out. It has been a journey, and it has been such an incredible journey with you all. I can't thank you all enough to for supporting these videos. I mean, there are so many great content creators out there. I've had the fortune enough to have some of those on the channel to do the after show, and there's just so many great people covering this show, and it means the world to me that you all will come to watch these videos, and I appreciate every single one of you all, but in particular, you know who I'm talking about. You know who you are. You're the people that literally, as soon as the episode ended, you hopped on the channel, you watched the reviews, you left your comments below, and again, thank you. I appreciate for those that are, you know, that maybe aren't subscribed and watch the videos, but more importantly to the ones that are subscribed, that are, you know, true, uh, you know, movie files fans. I shouldn't say fans. I don't look at you all as fans. I look at you all as a community, part of the family. I thank you all for the support, and here we are. We have made it to the end line, and uh, let's just get into it, but again, thank you all for the continued support with these reviews, but briefly, before we break it it all down. I got to talk about my thoughts in the episode and then we're going to get into my, you know, more elaborate, well thought out, in depth conversations. I've seen the episode twice now. And if you all watched my live watch party yesterday, when the episode ended, again, it was my first time watching the episode last night, I was indifferent. I was kind of unsatisfied, underwhelmed by the finale. We had our discussion with the after show. And then after the after show last night, I stayed up to about one o'clock. I watched, rewatched the episode, took down some notes, slept on it, and here I am talking about it now. And after my rewatch, I have come to appreciate the finale. It's not my favorite episode. Um, it has its flaws that we'll talk about. But the thing I'm, I, I, I've, kind of sat down and slept on it. When you go into a show like this that we all love, and we, you know, I made a prediction video that you all can check out if you haven't already, and some of my predictions came true, some of them didn't come true. You know, obviously I mentioned the ashtray situation, which kind of played out, like I said, and I mentioned how I thought that Lori was going to be involved in the show, which didn't happen, and some other things that didn't happen as well. But after I, you know, put my predictions and all my theories aside and then rewatch it for the second time, I come to appreciate the narrative that we got. And I think that's sometimes when we might have those feelings of underwhelmness or disappointed or unsatisfied. It didn't do the things we wanted, but it did something different. And since it was different, we might didn't, you know, to be fair, there are things that were different that I did not enjoy about the finale. But then after I digested it, I'm like, oh, okay. That makes sense. That plays into the narrative. That makes sense to the character. So I have come to come to appreciate the finale. Again, it's not my favorite episode. It's not terrible finale. It is a little bit underwhelming at points, but overall, I have come from going to being indifferent, unsatisfied, to appreciating what we got in this finale. But again, let me know your thoughts in the comments. With all that being said, are you ready? Well, let's break it all down. We immediately open up with the events of last week with Fez leaving for the play, but he notices 
there's awkwardness in the room, there's some weirdness, there's some tension going on, and this is where we go to Custer, who talks to Fez and says that the cops have found Mouse's body, and I'm still curious on what they, who, who was responsible for hiding the body is really what I want to know, but neither here nor there. This is real. This is where the MVP steps up. And I'm talking about Faye. Now, Faye was a character that appeared in the very first episode. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think she was in every single episode from that point on. She became, she's not like a series regular, but she was in every single episode. And who knows what season three has for that character. But she's a real MVP. She drops the glass. She steps down and does, you know, puts her finger on her big ass lips and says, shh. Don't say nothing. Don't say anything. Warning Fez that obviously her boyfriend is, you know, taping this for the police to use this against Fez. So again, Faye, you are the real MVP. And she doesn't even just do that. She goes a step further and she goes on to say, didn't you tell me that Lori killed Mouse? You know, Lori on this, I can't remember the street, uh, and goes into detail and to throw in, because what, are you high? What are you talking about? But it's in this moment. And again, this is on a second rewatch. When she said Lori's name with her address, and then I come to think, why was Lori absent in this finale? I wonder, with Faye saying that Lori was involved, if the cops went on and went ahead and looked into Lori, and they went into her house and saw the guns and the drugs and the people apparently in the closet, and that's why Lori was missing this finale, because Faye... She killed two birds with one stone, essentially, in this scene. I don't know. I might be wrong that she, you know, the cops maybe didn't even pay attention to what she was saying because she is, you know, she, they might look into her and be like, she doesn't know what she's talking about. But hey, there might be some validity in that. She might have actually been able to take Lori off the board. Let me know if you all were thinking the same thing. But moving on, it's in this moment that this is where I'm starting to notice the major differences in Fez and his younger brother Ashtray because we see Fez he's trying to defuse the situation of a certain extent he's trying to get Custer out of the house unfortunately this is where you don't turn your back on someone like Ashtray because as Fez is kind of you know situate getting the situation defused that box cutter that little man had in his hand he goes up to Ash Ashtray goes up to Custer stabs him in the neck and this is almost play by play remin reminiscence to episode one of this season when he killed mouse he is just re reactionary he is a shoot first ask questions later he's a no nonsense type of individual you can respect that at some points right but not when it comes to death right you don't just kill people without the consequences being there and unfortunately the consequences do catch up to ashtray which we'll talk about here in a little bit but moving on i don't know if it was me in this moment but i feel like when you know phase she wasn't too phased with her boyfriend being killed right in front of her which made me think i don't know if we ever really talked about it do we assume that the Faye and Fez relationship was more just a friendship, appreciation, a respect for one another? More so, I'm talking about, I don't think Fez, he had no interest in Faye at all. But I'm referring to, did Faye have a little bit of romance towards him? Or was it just, like I said, you let me in your house, you're taking care of me, I appreciate you. Or was there some romance? Because again, when, when Custer died, it looked like she she was shocked, obviously, because someone was just murdered in front of her. But she seemed like she just was like, all right, well, there's that relationship. But again, let me know. Did they have a thing uh, for Fez? Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments. But here is where we go into some moments that really kind of broke my heart as we cut to Fez and Lexi talking about their future. More specifically, what's Fez's plans? As he says that he would like to be a farmer with a family very similar to a Little House on the Prairie. I love this conversation between these two characters. You know, meanwhile, we see Lexi wants to be a mom of three and she has a very particular plan for her life. More in particular, she wants to be a writer and again i love this conversation because it, it, they are having they're talking about fez's thoughts on social media instagram and, and twitter and all the different things like that and how he goes into i want to i want to discover someone i don't want all the information just out on the table i want to learn who you are meet who you are see your pros see your cons you know lexi's like oh, okay that makes sense and she goes into how you know their similarities and how they share a common interest and it's in this moment he's like oh, you know that's why i'm glad that we became friends aren't you and she's like yeah I so much like whatever she said it's just so cute to see them two together kind of building this relationship building that friendship which if things would have worked out 
who knows if that would have become a little bit something more of a romance. I know some of you all, you know, we don't know the exact age of Fez yet. I, I know season one, when Nate called him out and said, what are you, a 19, 20 year old high school dropout? But then again, I don't know if I read somewhere that they, they retconned that and they made him, you know, uh, 18, 19, I don't know. But regardless of the romantic relationship, I do like the friendship that they were developing. Let me know again how you all felt about that moment of them just, just sharing their future and how the future could maybe be together. And again, maybe they don't have to be romantic at the age of 19 or 17 with Lexi, but maybe as she gets 18 and he's 20, they can look into that future together, right? So I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on all that. But as we go on, I want to pause here because this is time to check in with who I called Michael Myers last week, and you all called her Carrie. Well, let's call her Carrie Myers. She's breathing on the glass, and this is where, you know, we say, by the way, when Rue was looking back at Cassie, it reminded me she probably saw a version of herself in Cassie to a certain extent, because I say that because go back to Rue in episode five. She was running around a city crazy as hell like Cassie is at this point, but neither here nor there. I'm thinking at this moment, when Cassie takes her ass and walks down the aisle, I'm like, oh, no, this, this, she ain't going to show. Okay, she's on the stage now. Okay, she's on the stage. This ain't real. I'm thinking this is a dream because I'm like, okay, there's no way Cassie's putting all her dirty laundry out there, especially considering that she's upset with her sister telling her business and then you're going on stage telling more of your business. I'm like, no, this, this ain't real. This is a, a fantasy. This is reminiscence to um, the Maddie finding out from Cassie that she's in love with Nate and we found out that was all a dream. Ah, well, unfortunately for Cassie, but fortunate for us because this was a fantastic scene, it was not a dream, and Cassie is here to lay it all out for the audience to see, and uh, it did not disappoint. This is the walk of shame, and this is a great opening, and this is the beginning of the finale. Again, let me know. This is the opening of the show, the first five minutes. Let me know how you feel about it because we're about to get into... Cassie Howard letting it all out. So as we see, Cassie goes into her bag and into her emotions. She is on the scene talking about how Lexi, it is so hard to be in my shadow. You don't know what it's like to live life. You don't know what it's like to take risk. You don't know what it's like to love someone going in on her sister. And I'm just feeling so bad for Lexi because it's a little... <laughs> tiny little bit of truth of what Cassie's saying because like I mentioned last week if someone did a play without me knowing and showing all these different scenes these scenes that I didn't want no one to know about these more intimate moments sad moments there's a little bit of like okay I understand where Cassie's coming from but at the same time as Fez said to Lexi a couple weeks ago sometimes it takes people to get their feelings hurt to really realize what their flaws are which I think is the importance of this play which we'll get into a little bit later but a little bit, a little bit of truth that Cassie was talking about to her sister at this moment. But more importantly, when I'm watching this episode two times now, I'm thinking to myself, where are the goddamn teachers? Why is no one stopping this girl from walking on stage? And, and more or less, you know, Susie, who steps up a little bit later. But I'm like, why are the teachers not stepping up? I am to assume that there are no teachers at this school, right? They obviously allow kids to have these million dollar production plays and they have these kids just doing whatever they want. They don't have to do homework. They don't have to do anything. This is not your average school. We have fully realized that. But either way, we I guess at this point, the teachers, if there were teachers in that room, they're like, you know what? The kids are having sex on stage. They're, you got kids, you know, doing, pretending to masturbate in, in, the, in the locker room scene. They're probably like, you know what? I'm washing my hands. This is probably a part of the play. So F it. Let the show go on. But as we go on, we see Alexi begs her sister to stop and Cassie, oh no, she ain't done. This is only the beginning of her rant. Susie finally gets on stage and again, Susie, shout out to her. She thinks, she takes the moment, she tries to defuse the situation. But before that, she goes and calls Ethan on stage, which by the way, Ethan, yes, you you deserve all the, the awards, the, the Tony's awards, because you did your thing playing everyone in the season. He... Shout out to Ethan because he was given more in the play than he was in the entire season. But I love that moment with her and, uh, you know, Susie thanking him because he deserves those flowers. But she's not able to stop her older daughter from going off and going into her rant here. She is, again, she goes into, I live life. I take risks, this, that, and the other. Again, she is just on cloud 10 going in on her sister. She wants to embrace the villain role and she even goes ahead and she attacks the Cassie look like because again 
I don't remember Lexi. Was she at the carnival, the Shook Ones episode? Because how does she know that her sister did that on that uh, Ferris wheel thing? Um, maybe because people got out and she put it out there. Or maybe Cassie told her sister and didn't think her sister was going to put it into play. But she is, again, she's upset. She pulls down her double. And again, she's fully embracing this villainous role. And here is a quote we have all been saying for weeks. Leave it to, I would say... Her real sister, I'm talking about Maddie, Lexi's real sister, she has had enough of this nonsense and she is there to protect her little sister. And, uh, you know, she says, I think we all been saying this for weeks. Someone's got to put that bitch down. <laughs> we see Maddie going on stage, handling her beef. And uh, bear with me, I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be on my boxing stuff right here, being the the ringside announcers. Let's do a play by play of this moment here. Maddie takes off her shoes. In comes Cat, random friend from season one, wants Maddie to beat her ass. Cassie runs, makes a cut. In comes Maddie with a swift but effective right smack to the face. Cassie continues to run away for her life as Maddie grabs her but gotta give it to Cassie on this one she is quick and she gets away but only to run into a Maddie pushing her against the wall face right into the wall oh that moment there was what we've been waiting for right I don't condone violence ladies and gentlemen but like my boy Fez said Sometimes it takes you getting hurt to realize how much of an a-hole you have been. And uh, sometimes, again, we don't condone violence, but sometimes it takes those paws. It takes those hands being put on you to realize your flaws. Again, I love that moment. We don't condone violence, but hey, someone had to put that bitch down. <laughs> Let me know what you thought of the scene. Let's talk about that in the comments. But again, also, I can't think of the girl's name, but she even goes as far, far as to say what we've been saying for weeks. Honestly, someone needed to do that. Someone needed to beat her ass because she slept with her best friend's boyfriend. So again, we needed a little bit of that levity, right? We needed a little bit of that that funniness again it was violence but it was fun violence right no one died in this moment as we'll talk about later but I think that moment was important because things get a lot more emotional as we move on which speaking of this is where Rue informs us that she paid a visit to Elliot just a few days prior to the play and I have some things I enjoyed about this scene but I'm going to get to my issue with this episode and an issue with a character as it seems as Rue is telling him that she that he might have accidentally saved her and obviously telling Leslie what's going on and she forgives him for doing so but more importantly she thanks him for saving her life. Now we get into it seems like Elliot isn't giving up on drugs anytime soon and we know that Rue hasn't spoken to Jules in in a long time and all that stuff is interesting. And then we go into hey, I wrote a song about you. Do you mind if I play it? I'm gonna say it right now. The song was beautiful. I know Dominic is an actual performer. I, I've never listened to his music, but after hearing that song, I'm like, okay, this dude has some really good vocals. You know, Labyrinth wrote this song and it was a beautiful song. Don't get me wrong. I, I really appreciate it. But listen, I ain't gonna lie. That scene went on way too long. I have I, I have in my notes here. That scene was literally three minutes long of him singing that song. Beautiful song. Beautiful lyrics. The lyrics are important too. I don't know if you all listen to the lyrics, but it was him essentially kind of going over his his relationship with Rue and, and and their you know how important it was from the mead and all the different things like that. So there isn't there is a significance to the scene. I get that. But three minutes, I mean, come on, man. We got so much to check in on. There were so many unanswered questions that we'll get to. So, again, I might be that one person that uh, that has a flaw with this scene, but I thought that scene went on way too long for my personal opinion. But it's more or less in this conversation, which, by the way, he says truth or dare, and she says truth, and he's like, oh, should we be friends, this, that, and the other. I'm thinking he's going to tell her what happened with Jules. He did not do that at all, which brings me to the character Elliot. Dominic, he seems to be, this is my first time being exposed to him. He did a, I have no issues with anyone in this show in regards to their performance. My issue goes to the Sam Levison, the creator, the writer of these characters. I don't know why Elliot was in this season. I mentioned in my season one review that Calvin Harrison Jr., I assume was going to play the Elliot character. Unfortunately, he wasn't, you know, he decided to not do the role. And I think that they got Dominic kind of last minute. Um, you know, again, I think the actor's done a great job in the role, but I just think that he was just a plot device. He didn't have any depth. We didn't learn much from him. And also, when you think about the Dominic, him stepping into the role, 
if you think about this season, he's only really shared screen time with Jules and Rue. And that makes me think that he was brought in last minute due to, you know, safety protocols because every single scene was just those three besides Leslie and Gia's scene. He didn't really, you know, interact with anyone else in the show, which almost made me think that he was like an imaginary character, just those two characters, but obviously he's real. But I, I'm not a fan of the Elliot character at the end of the day. Again, great name. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. But the character to me was just hollow and just didn't really add much. Just that he was just a foil. He was just a, a plot device to be you know, Rue and Jules. And that was it. I, I'm sorry. I know a lot of you all love Elliot. Great name. Again, the performance was good, but I just think the character was pointless. So that might just be me. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below. But let's go back to Lexi, who's broken at this point in the episode. She, and, and this is a great moment here. Obviously, her sister broke her down, embarrassed her. But shout out to two people in this scene. Number one, shout out to Bobby, who ho I hope she gets more to do in season three as she's talking about art is meant to be risky. It's meant to, you know, sometimes hurt people's feelings. So I love that she was able to say that to, to Lexi. That was one example to her kind of getting her mojo back and getting back in her head and getting back in her zone. But then this moment here, we see Ruse in the crowd and she just kind of says, Lexi, Lexi, and it gets the crowd going, and it gives Lexi the fuel she needs to continue to go on with the play, but going back to how important that scene was for Rue to do that, Rue hasn't been a good friend to Lexi for a very long time, and Lexi has been there for Rue for a very long time, dating back to when her father died, even probably dating back to that, and obviously we know what she did in season one, Lexi has always been there for Rue. It's about damn time that Rue is there for Lexi, cheering her friend up, getting her back in her head, getting her to finish this play. I love that scene. I appreciate that scene. It's a moment that I love. She got her swagger back. But again, Bobby, Rue, you did a good job helping out your friend at that moment. But going back into it all, we see Lexi is back on stage. She addresses the technical difficulties, but more importantly, she goes into the conversation she had with someone, and we know that that someone was Fez, but unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it. But the key thing that he told her, sometimes your loved ones have to get hurt. They have to see their flaws, and this one is for Fez, which when she said that, Ah, that breaks my heart because now let's cut to the scene. Let's cut to this moment here between what's going on with Fez. And again, it's just so drastically different when we see what our other characters go through. Boyfriends, girlfriends, all that drama that we get with our main cast. Contrast that to what Fez got going on. This man is fighting for life or death. It just kind of shows you how different of a lifestyle he lives compared to our main cast. But getting into it here, Fez slaps Ashtray to get, he gives him the plan. Fez wants to take the fall. He wants to take full responsibility. And again, you talk about moments that just broke my heart when he says he puts his head on his head and says, I love you, brother. Oh, man, I'm like, dude, this, they, they, they doing it. They doing it. They going ahead and it's going to break my heart right here on uh, you know, the finale here. As we go on, it's in this moment that Fez couldn't do what I think he should have did, which is completely knock out Ashtray because, unfortunately, Ashtray takes it upon himself. He doesn't listen to anything his brother says. He goes into the laundry room, gets the ammo as Faye sees that the cops are, are going to go in the house. He gets all the ammo stuff. Fez sees that Ashtray is ramboed up. He's ready to go out, guns to blazing, and he asks for him to give him the gun. Do you want to die? Don't do this. It's, it's first off, the uh, actor Fez uh, Agnes Cloud, I think his name is. I might mix up his first name. What an incredible job. This was the, he's been great. He's one of my favorite characters in the show, but this performance here was just top notch in my opinion. He's just begging and pleading for him to give him the gun. Don't do this. Ashtray, listen to me. Don't do this. At this point, the police are getting ready to break in the door as Ashtray hits Fez in the head with a shotgun. The police make their way into the home. We're going to go back to that scene because we're going to break down that moment that broke my heart, but let's check in with the Jacobs family. At this point, Nate, a loaded gun in hand, he arrives to his father's construction site, and it's so interesting to parallel these scenes that are going on at the same time. We see that Fez is trying to protect his little brother. We see that his little brother is trying to protect him. Parallel that to a family, a, a blood family, because we know Fez and Ashtray, they're not blood brothers, but we see a father and son, the father's ruin the son's life and now the son's about to ruin his father's life and juxtapose okay knowing that 
Nate, he left the play and immediately went to his father. He was embarrassed in front of his his peers and his classmates. He took that embarrassment and went straight to his father. And I think this is where Nate, his psychotic mind, I got to get the heat off me. Let me go ahead and put my dad under the bus. Let me throw away my family. Let me throw away all the legacy stuff. So very interesting to kind of see what he immediately, his first reaction to being embarrassed is I need to bring someone down and get the heat off me. And that is his father. Let's break it all down. Changing his family forever. Look on Cal's face when he sees his son walk in the door is the look on his face when when uh, Nate approached him about the video in episode, what was that, episode one or episode two? Similar look there. Cal is out here living his best life, trying to do what he was trying to do in episode four, which was going to the club. He's living his the life he wants to live with all his friends and all that stuff there. And I'm like, I'm not a Cal fan, but I'm like, hey, this is the life he wants to live. And by the way, I think, is, is Derek in there some way? But nah, I don't think we'll ever get Derek. But either way, we see Nate starts to go into what they both have in common, which is hurting people, which is very true. And uh, he says, he asks his dad, are you happy? And, you know, he says, are you happier? And, and Cal says, yes, I am happier. He ultimately is happier in some ways. Nate tells him about the unfairness of the situation of Cal being able to move out, move on with his life. Meanwhile, his family's in ruins. His family's broken, and I know y'all don't want to hear this, and I don't even want to say it. Nate is right. Cal has not taken any responsibility for any of the stuff he's done, right? So I hate to say it. I'm almost gagging my mouth saying it. Nate's right in this moment. He's speaking some truth right now, ladies and gentlemen. His, his cow's responsibility is non-existent. And is as I, you know, as I mentioned during the scene with his mom last week, he goes into what went wrong with Nate. And like I said that, you know, I've always thought that when he found his dad's tapes, that's when he changed. That's when his whole life kind of changed right in front of him. And going back to that nightmare scene, you know, some of us were speculating, well, did Cal molest his son? Did he, you know, do something to uh, Nate? No, but metaphorically, Nate put himself in that position of those people that he saw on those tapes as his father doing those things to him. So that kind of explains that in, that nightmare that he had last week. The room was cleared out at this point, and they're having kind of a heart-to-heart in regards to now Cal is trying to do what a Nate would do, what a, what a Jacobs would do in the situation. He tries to spin the pendulum into his side, right? He goes into apologizing. Remember when Nate, when uh, Cassie snapped on Nate and even Nate with Maddie, he always says to them, I love you, right? He tries to get in their head and we see Cal, this is where he learned it from, his dad, as he's trying to do the exact same thing to him at this point. And uh, Nate, he's not having it. He doesn't want his apologies. He just wants revenge, Gun in one hand at this point, and, and Cal's like, what does that mean, son? Are you about to kill me? No, nah, I'm going to do something worse than that. Switches the gun into his left hand, gets the USB, which my mind is just like, you telling me all those years of what Cal's been doing for probably 18 years is on a thumb drive? USB? Okay, I'll, I'll suspend my dis- <laughs> disbelief at that point, but neither here nor there. I got everything right here. Everything to ruin your life. And I and I think when I saw that moment, I'm like, okay, number one, he has a gun in front of his dad showing you I can end your life right now. But it's, instead of physically ending your life, like literally killing you, I'm going to kill you by taking away your legacy. I'm going to kill you by taking away everything you have built with this USB thumb drive, with all the stuff you have done, which makes me think just to dive deeper into that thumb drive. He made a copy of the tape. We realized that, right? But he gave Jules a tape. So I wonder, did he use that that USB and show them, this is my dad having sex with an underage person in Jules in this matter. And I wonder if Jules is going to find that out or if there were, because I don't, I would imagine when when the cops look at the tape, they don't know the ages. Like, I don't know if they like, okay, let's go to this person's house and see if they, what age they are. So I think that it was Jules that he showed them on that tape, which makes me go back to, is Jules going to find out? Is she going to get caught up in this mess? Is she going to go have to go to court and, and go into all this stuff? Is it going to come out about the whole Tyler being a you know being in jail thing? I wonder if that's going to play into season three. But again, going back to that moment, the cops arrive, and I think about season one finale. Think about when Nate and Cal were getting into it, and you know Nate was banging his head against the wall, very vulnerable. You know, his dad came into his turf. He came into his room juxtaposes that to this finale, we see Nate comes into his dad's, you know, workplace and ruins his life. So I got a question for you all. And it's it's one or two ways uh, that that I'm going to pose this question. Nate won, right? We know that Nate won, but I want to know in this moment, two things I have for you all. 
Did you feel bad for Cal? I just want to know. There's no right or wrong answers. Did you feel bad for Cal? That's the one option. Option two, were you rooting for Nate in that moment? There's only two options, so I want to know. Did you feel bad for, for Cal or were you rooting for Nate in that moment? Let me know yours. I'm going option two. As much as I don't like the Nate character, Cal deserved that. So let me know your thoughts. Again, there's no right or wrong answers, but let's talk about that in the comments. Meanwhile, like I said, Cal, he's under arrest. And... Um, what next for Cal? Is he gonna? Is he off the table? Is he gonna be involved in season three? Is he gonna go to court? Are we gonna see Jules get into the mix? Are we gonna meet Derek? Are we gonna meet, as I put on the screen now, that third child that's been missing since 1993? He was taken by Pennywise. What will happen with Cal? Do you want to see more? Let's talk about that in the comments below. But back to the moment that will leave everyone talking, and that is R.I.P. The ashtray. As we break it down, the cops are now in the house, guns locked and loaded. Again, it's important to note that Faye, she surrendered, and I believe their grandmother was okay. She wasn't harmed in the shooting, to my belief. So I believe those characters uh, will be back. I don't know if the grandmother's going to be back, because I don't know who's going to take care of her at this point. But it is important to note that Faye was not harmed. She did surrender in that scene. But going back to it, Fez yells, don't shoot. There's a kid in there, and he begs and pleads for Ash to come out. And we see that a flash grenade goes off, and Ashtray shoots, not knowing that he's sh his brother's right there. He accidentally shoots Fez in the stomach, leaving Fez to hit the ground. We see him screaming for his little brother, who at this point, unfortunately, is just, he wants to go out this way. This is how Ashtray wants to go out. He's not a, let me think about it, let me, you know, kind of think about my future. No, he's thinking about this is how I'm going out. And this is how he goes out. As we see, he's fighting to the last breath. Mind you, this is the second time me watching this. And I'm just really appreciating the performance by Fez in this moment. He's absolutely killing it. He's calling for Ash, who we think at this point, there's been a hundred bullets shot into that room. Maybe he's dead. No, he has one more round in him. The cop comes in. He kills the cop on screen. And unfortunately, he looks at his older brother his older brother looks at him, and uh, R.I.P. Ashtray, he gets shot. Now, listen, I'm just going to pose this out there because I have been watching so many shows, so many movies. My rule of thumb is if you don't see a body, the character is not dead. Now, replaying that scene, he gets shot, and we all we hear is a thump, assuming that he is dead. Now, he's a kid. He could have got shot in the shoulder. Got shot for the first time, he passes out, explaining the thump, or as that, you know, the, the bullet or the, um, you know, laser goes up to his head, from his chest to his head, they shoot him, kill him on sight. I'm saying I think Ashtray is dead, but I'm also saying when you don't see a body, I know you can't kill a kid on screen, don't get me wrong, but I'm saying when you don't see a body, it may be left up from interpretation, but again, let me know your thoughts. I'm pretty sure 99.99999% that Ashtray is dead, especially hearing that thump and seeing Ash, uh, you know, Fez's reaction. But let me just, let's, 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 let's just have that conversation in the comments below. But we hear the body hit the floor. And again, it's in this moment that this is where Fez's life is going to be forever changed. Uh, either way, RIP to the to, to the Ashtray. Uh, very interesting character. You know, we didn't get as much for the character. He wasn't the most, you know, well-fleshed out character. But he, he left an impact. That little actor, I've seen him in other things. And I know he has a future ahead of him. I believe he's a boxer in real life. He's going to be in, in Umbrella Academy Season 3. He's, he's a great actor. I've seen him in other things. He's really great. I think that he, even with the little bit that he was given, he brought more out to the character. So I appreciate the actor. And again, RIP to Ashtray. Let's talk about it in the comments below. But cut between all this going on, we see Rue talking about her dad at his wake again with Lexi seeing her father and getting into the car accident. And notice how they had someone to lean on during those moments. And it breaks my heart to just think about Fez just saw his little brother get killed and he has no one. And he's getting arrested at the same time, which makes me think what's going to happen to Fez in season three. Is he off the table now? Are we going to be visiting him in prison? Are we going to have Lexi visiting him? Are we going to have Faye visiting him? Are we going to have his mom maybe rehashing and meeting her son again? I don't know. But it just broke my heart to know that they had people to rely on when they lost the most important person in their life. And Fez don't have no one, which is just so sad and so unfortunate at that moment, which speaks again to the differences of their lifestyle and how they were raised and how, you know, they're a product of their environments. But more important to note, as Rue tells the audience that this is what changes the character forever, which again, Fez, 
This is who she was referring to. He will never be the same. Moving on, I love this scene so much by the way that Lexi saw both her dad and her best friend in the hospital, which again to me speaks so much to Lexi never wants to give up on Rue because she feels like her father gave up on her, so she doesn't want to do that to Rue. So I love that kind of connection that she always has with Rue. And I urge you all to re-watch this scene here. I know it's difficult, but what Rue is saying about losing her father and her feelings about all that hit me like a bag of bricks because I've lost some, the most important person in my life and I'm so grateful to experience you know, the person in my life and, and, and what she was saying in that moment about the experiences that she had with her dad and you know the emptiness that she had and asking, you know, I was in that same position, right? Like what now, what, what do I do with my life after losing someone so important? Memories exist outside of time as as long as I live, you'll be with me forever. And that just touched my euphoria heart because, again, that's such an important line. When you lose someone so close to you, how do you move on? It's about, you know, remembering their memories and, and the best moments and having them, you know, with you and then the experience you had with them. And it's just such a great line and such a great moment for the character. And it just really hit me personally. So I, I love that scene so much and it just really moved me in that moment let me know your thoughts on that but now a scene i need rue that i needed and which is rue calling lexi and talking to her about the play i'm not gonna lie i'm a little bit confused about the scene i love the scene because it's what i needed i love these characters getting back to being friends but i'm just confused on the placement and what if it was real if it was a future scene that was mixed into the play but let's talk about it right now this is uh where rue is seeing lexi but there's no mention mention of fez in regards to if this is a future moment if I'm to assume the play was on a Friday or Saturday, this meeting that they're having is a Sunday type of conversation. So they don't mention Fez, and we know that this is current timeline in a sense or future timeline. But either way, we see that they have the conversation. Rue now over talks about the play, what it meant to her, which a lot of you all are like, the play is pointless. No, the play is not pointless. The play saved Rue. It made her look at her life and not be, she even says so much so, this is the first time she's able to see herself not as the bad person, right? So the play is not only important for Rue, it also is important for Cassie, important to Nate, because look at what the play did to all of those characters. Those were the pivotal characters, besides Lexi, obviously. Rue, Cassie, and Nate were the, also the stars of the play, and seeing themselves on stage we see their, what happened with those characters after seeing themselves. So it's a very important moment for them to have this conversation, how much that play meant to them. And then they go into talking about their dads and what it was like when they're gone and the feeling of absence and how Lexi feels like whenever the phone rings, it might be that call that her dad's dead. And it's just such a, and, and when Ruth says to her, your dad, he wants to get better for you, but not himself because he loves you more than he loves himself. It's just so much greatness in this scene. But again, I'm just like, I love this scene so much. It's so well placed. I love the performances. All that stuff was fantastic. Again, the play saved Rue and had that perspective. But then I'm thinking to myself, okay, this scene is in the play. So is this Lexi imagining this scene happening? Is this a, because obviously she can't <laughs> predict the future. I think it's a mixture of both. Like, again, I think she wanted Rue to say all this stuff. And again, it's like a, you know, it's not a real moment because it didn't actually happen, but it's a moment that Lexi wanted to happen. So again, I loved it, but I'm just like, is this in the future? Is this in the past? Is this just made up? I think it's a mixture of all those things. But again, let me know. The most important thing is let me know what you all thought about the scene uh, with it, it, the placement, how it all played out. But again, this is the end. Either way, this is the end of our life, the most expensive play in school history. Uh, this puts the school in a debt that they've never seen before. And I think the school is going to be closing after this production. But again, Lexi, the play was fantastic. But back to Maddie, who, by the way, not a scratch, not a nail broken, not a cut on the face, but a little cut on the foot with the Coca-Cola putting, uh, you know, putting the swelling down. Again, Maddie is a goat in my opinion. And uh, looking at Cassie, juxtaposes that to Cassie, who looks like how she's been acting this season, which is an absolute mess. Maddie tells her that this is only the beginning, and I'm taking that scene as I am done with Nate Jacobs. If you want them, you can go have them. Best of luck. But also, I think there's a little bit of like, this is only the beginning, Cassie. I, I hate you right now, but I'm warning you, leave him be. And I might be wrong after that second rewatch. I think not only that Maddie is done with Nate, I think that Cassie, if you look at her face, I think she's starting to put the pieces together. Damn, she might be right. 
I need to snap out of this and leave Nate Jacobs alone. I hope that's the case. I might be wrong. Let me know your thoughts, how you interpreted that scene. Cut to the scene that I think should have replaced the whole three-minute concert that we got from Elliot, but we get the scene between Rue and Jules having the conversation that I think was much needed. We see Jules tells her, I'm sorry. I love you. I miss you. All Rue has to say in that moment is nothing. She kisses her on the forehead and walks away. I love that scene because in that moment to me, Rue chose herself to love herself and not put anyone in front of her. That is so important for that character. It's just a big moment of just in life in general. If you, you can't love anyone if you don't love yourself. So she picked herself. And then I think about season one finale. Who left Rue at the train station? It was Jules. And what happened? Rue went to the bottom. She went to her lowest point, got back in drugs, which brings me to this question. Will that happen to Jules? Well, now with Rue leaving her, and there was no harmful, was nothing mean about what she did. There was no resentment, no hate. It was just, you know, I'm choosing myself right now. But I wonder how Jules is going to react to that. Will that, I hate to say it, but will she go to her lowest point, which I think her lowest point is resurfacing her feelings for Tyler, a.k.a. Nate, Will that be a plot for season three? Let me know your thoughts on all of that in the comments below. We end with Rue telling us that she wants to believe that Jules was her first love. At least that's what she wants to tell herself. And we hear, and I think it's in this moment, that Rue and Jules are officially over. And Rue chooses her to love herself as Rue is gonna, she says to us, she stay clean for the rest of the school year, which means that this is a time jump. I don't know when she's saying this. I don't know how far into the future she's saying and this that's season three to explore that but she we see that she is going to stay clean and she thinks that she, what motivates her i love that ali told her this is the idea to being a good person what motivates her to stay clean and we end with her walking out into the sunset per se let me know in the comments when she was walking outside, I thought that Lori was going to come up and scoop her up or her goons were to scoop her up and it was going to end on that note. But no, again, she's speaking from the future. It seems like Lori, again, did Faye get Lori off the table? Is Lori going to still get her money? We'll see for season three, but she is going to try to stay clean for herself, but also for the idea of being the best person she can be. I love that moment for Rue. I really enjoy how they wrap it up, even though I thought she was going to get kidnapped, which I'm glad she didn't because that would have been pretty dark. But uh, yeah, and then we end the episode with the incredible vocals from Zendaya and the incredible song by Labyrinth. What a beautiful song. And, uh, you know, they teased this months ago. So uh, it was a beautiful song. And I've actually downloaded it. It's a really great song. So there you have it. The end of season two of Euphoria. And this is, man, I did not expect this to be this long. But let's wrap up some things. Overall thoughts of finale. Again, I was initially unsatisfied. Felt a little bit underwhelmed. Rewatching it, I come to appreciate it more. The main thing that stood out to me was Elliot. Kind of a waste of a character. Just uses a plot device. I hope we learn more about the character. Explore the character more. I hope he interacts with other characters in season three. Uh, but that scene with him and Rue just went on way too long for me, in my personal opinion. Um, as far as just kind of... Uh, and, and also, as far as the pros go, Rue, her loving herself, Cassie maybe realizing she needs to leave Nate alone, as well as uh, Maddie. I hate to say it, Nate doing what he did to his dad was a great thing for the character. Uh, and again, we'll see what happens with the Jacobs family. Who's going to support the family now? Because I don't think Marsh is working, nor do I think any of that people in that house is working. Um, and, you know, uh, all that stuff is fantastic. And again, the cinematography, the acting, all that stuff was, was incredible. Um, so, Again, I had my issues, but I overall enjoyed it for what it was. Season two overall cons. I've said it for weeks. Cat, I don't have to reiterate it. Cat, underwhelming character this season. It's not due to the actors. It's due to the writing, unfortunately. Uh, Jules's plot and Elliot, I mentioned. I thought those Elliot was kind of a wasted character, but Jules just kind of a confusing arc and not much to do this season, which brings me to my biggest con this season, which is also my biggest positive. Sam Levinson, he's a fantastic writer. He knows these characters, but I think, unfortunately, his story this season, it wasn't fluid, it wasn't as cohesive, and it was a bit messy. So, again, he is the, you know, the writer, creator, director, editor, all that stuff. He's fantastic at that, right? I mean, the production, obviously, is fantastic. The, the score is fantastic. The acting, the hair, the makeup, all that stuff is fire. The writing wasn't as strong as season one, which brings me to my final point, which season do I think was better? Now, to be fair, I've lived with season one a lot longer. I've seen it three times. I've only watched season two once, but I think at the end of the day, 
Season one was a much more cohesive story, uh, more fleshed out characters. Also, it has the the benefit of being finding the show for the first time, discovering the show for the first time. So I personally think season one is better than season two. But I'm gonna make, I'm gonna go ahead and just say again, I wanna, um, you know, as far as other characters in season two. I'm indifferent about Nate and Cal in the Jacobs family overall, but I do want to highlight Zendaya. You're going to get your Emmy yet again. Uh, Sydney Sweeney was fantastic this season. Lexi, Maude, you're incredible. I can't believe that's the same little girl when I see saw her growing up in the Judd Epitau, her dad. In those movies, to see her now, she was fantastic. Ali, Coma D'Amico, fantastic always. A little bit more of Leslie and Gia, I appreciate that. Maddie, she continues to be a goat. Uh, and, and like I said, all the acting is just fantastic. So those are kind of my highlights. And again, I, I prefer season one over two. And I'm going to tease it now. I'm not going to give my thoughts about season three right now because I'm going to maybe make a special video for you all, giving you all just kind of everything we know about season three so far and what I hope to see for a season three coming out in 2039. So <laughs> there you have it. 40 minutes, breaking it all down. Very long video. I can't wait to edit this because this will be a while. But hopefully I'm going to have this video out later Monday evening. If you all didn't mind, support your boy by liking the video, sharing it, and of course, leaving your thoughts in the comments. Again, I thank you, thank you, thank you for watching the after shows, watching his reviews. This ain't the last of my reviews. I cover a lot of other shows. You know, By the time this video is out, I'm going to have my Batman spoiler-free review, so check that out. Of course, I'm watching other shows like Raised by Wolves, Servant. Uh, we have a couple other shows coming this month, You know, Moon Knight, Atlanta Season 3, so keep an eye out for all that content. But again, from me to you, I appreciate you all. I hope you enjoyed these reviews. Hope you enjoyed the content. I got a couple more videos lined up for Euphoria, but before we get there, again, I, I thank you. Hope you're staying safe as you all can see on the screen now. Subscribe to the channel. Come and join the community. Check out my other content, and we'll catch you on the next video.